hug. I know you're not feeling well, Dr. Bob, so if you want to just do a brief explanation of the next thing. I have gone through hell with this pain, diverticulosis. It's really terrible. So we'll, we'll do a brief conversation on this, and then in a later date, we'll do a more okay. complex. But one of the differences that Dave and I have, and he's a brother and I love him, is over the issue of uh, theonomy. Could you maybe give a, a kind of a, a summary of theonomy and why you feel it's not biblical? Uh, theonomy, I explain where I disagree with it in my book, How Do the Old and New Testaments Relate to Each Other? Now, you must understand the leaders were my friends, the ones who passed, John Rusius, Rashtuni, Greg Bonson and I graduated from seminary. Gary North and I were such good friends, he invited me to be the editor for Dominion Press, which is the Theonomous Publishing Company. So yeah. uh, I was surprised, and I said, you know, I'm not a Theonomous. I said, but your scholarship is such that we would be honored if you would edit our material. But I didn't take it because I would be reading the main error, David, is exegetical. When you read in Matthew 5 and follow, where Jesus talks about the law and the prophets, and that he did not come to destroy them, Bonson and the other Thotimus assume the word law refers to legal codes build a fence on your roof. If you need to go take a bathroom, you dig a hole and you do it so deep, all these little rules. Whereas actually what Jesus is talking about is a phrase that referred to the Torah, which is the Pentateuch. So the law refers to the first five books. The prophets referred to the rest of the Old Testament called the Tanakh. Other places, it's called the, the law, the writings, and the prophets. So what they, when they, you ever heard of Pavlov's dog, David? Big experiment. Every time you fed a dog, they rang a bell. So then they found that if they rang the bell, did the dog begin to salivate, assuming he's going to get some? Yes, he did. So the moment theonomists see the word law, they immediately think, oh, it's rules about how to cut your hair. Rush Dooney would not wear clothing of mixed material, so you couldn't do a cotton rayon shirt. He would not eat non-kosher food. Now Gary North, his son-in-law, realize I know all of these people. His son-in-law would eat ribs and wear a cotton, it became so a problem that for a while the grandfather could not even visit his grandchildren. And you see, that's where uh, your differences of opinion when it starts destroying the family isn't the best thing to do. So the word law means Torah. The Torah means all that God revealed in the, in the Pentateuch for Israel, it doesn't have to do with the church. I'm, we're not Israel, Israel's not the church. So when the theonomists see the word law, they're like Pavlov's dogs, they begin salivating, it's the codes, the law. No, it's talking about scripture. Jesus said, I have come to fulfill scripture. That's what it is, not about little rules, things of that nature. Does that help, David? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, understand, I understand. Uh, I know that, you know, even in, in a lot of circles, like the theonomous circles, there's a lot of variants, you know. Uh, oh, no, they all have excommunicated each other. The Bonsonites excommunicated the Northites, who excommunicated the Rushites. They, <laughs> because it was Herman, I call it arbitrary hermeneutics, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. this law stays, but that one goes. And once you're arbitrary, 
Rush oh. Tooney could say, you can't eat lobster. Yeah. And North would say, then hand me your lobster. <laughs> See, in other words, they, they fell among themselves. And in the end, Theonomy died a death. They're all scattered, blown in the wind. Uh, Bonson's death was the final nail in the coffin. The best reputation is by the Westminster Seminary faculty. They did an entire volume refuting theonomy chapter by chapter. Sounds like they were contradicting each other for a while. Really? So just for the, for the non-scholar and the non-person that might be getting a little confused here. So the point you're making is that uh, there wasn't any teaching in the New Testament church uh, that we were to live under the the the, the law, whether it be the, the Torah or the ten, or whatever. Can you Called case explain case law. That? Nowhere were the Gentiles told they had to let their sideburns grow to be curls. Remember, the, the Torah said... You cannot cut the sides of your head. Yeah. You can only cut the top of your head. So no, if you geez. see the Hasidic Jew, the Hasidim, they have the pin, the curls like pigtails. Now, where I and see, this is I always laughed. I was with Rush Juni. I said, where's the roof? We were outside his home. I said, where's the roof? What roof? Thou shalt build a wall of it. He said, oh, well, I'm dead. I said, no, you guys practice arbitrary hermeneutics. The Old Testament is a cafeteria. You pick whatever laws you like and move on, but the guy behind you picks what he likes. It's called cafeteria theonomy. <laughs> well, let me, because let me, it was arbitrary, it, it destroyed itself. It is well, a viable. Let me interject a little bit here because I think, uh, and I talked to David enough to know that he, he understands that part, but I think the issue that we're having with some of the modern the theonomists that are coming out, really pushing this, is, let me ask you a question, Dr. Bob. Is there a teaching in the New Testament where God, where Christ wanted Christianity to be national law and, and no. wanted the... Well, there the is no Christian Sharia law. Okay. None. First Corinthians five, Paul says, "Now, when I was talking to you about immoral people and stuff, I was referring to people in the church, not people in the world." By what right do you run yeah. around peeking in the bedrooms of people and telling unsaved people, "Oh, you have to. Uh, he has to be on top. She can't be on top. Can't have oral sex, and we're going to make a law and put you in jail." Where is this? Paul said you'd have to leave this earth and go to the moon. So we have those who believe in Christian Sharia law fanatics, and they want to shove the Bible down the throats of unbelievers. And that is not New Testament biblical teaching. That's not what we're called to do at all. We're, no, yeah. we're not. We're, Schaefer, I used to sit with Schaefer at Labrie. He's, and I raised my children this way. My son's here. I said, we are counterculture. We are always the revolutionaries. We are never the status quo. You must not confuse the church and the world. The moment you blend them, as in Catholicism and the Scottish Presbyterian, you end up with stupid stuff. If you went to the actual border with Scotland, put one foot outside, one foot inside, you would have been told you're one foot inside the kingdom of Christ and one foot out. I think it's like Hoka Pokey doing a square dance and the idea that if the kingdom of Christ is here and now, then you have border gods, you have police, you have borders, you have guns. Jesus said, if I wanted to have Christian soldiers, I would say, and my father would send him down by the legion and we'd clean everybody up. So the idea that we Christians are to enforce Sharia law from the Old Testament, can't eat pork or whatever it is, it's just as bad as the Islamic Sharia law. Same nonsense. 